Hey, happy uh, Sunday morning, everybody. Um, I'm gonna try to bang out several of these real quick. Uh, Amy, I'll start with yours. So uh, Ms. Chismore says, does the school budget include breakfast and lunches for all children um, in, the, in the budget? Everyone should have access to meals. I think that you'll find among staff and um, the administration that we, we definitely, you know, understand the value of having kids have proper nutrition. Uh, two things. One, having proper nutrition. Two, um, you know, when you have some kids on school lunches and some kids not, there's also, as you get older, there's a stigmatization that happens. Um, kids get pretty savvy to who's on free and reduced lunch and who isn't. Uh, and what we find in our upper grades is, as a result of that, is that as kids get in the high school, especially, they start to, um, they start to, kind of push parents back and like, don't, don't sign us up for the, the free and reduced lunch program. And our numbers go down. Um, and it's primarily because people who can elect, they're not automatically, uh, some families through food stamps are automatically given a free and reduced lunch status. Uh, for other families, they have to go through the, have to fill out the paperwork and we, we get them on based on um, getting information about um, their household income, those types of things. But what we see is that kids start to figure it out and then kids start to feel the social pressure. And so there's a dip. It'd be great if we were in a position to do universal meals for all kids. Um, it's something that I think would be super, super valuable uh, and uh, whatnot. But to answer your question... It's not in there right now, and here's the thing. So this is uh, Linda Kelly, who's in the in this uh, thread too, and I uh, dealt with this a while ago when we started to have um, families go delinquent on payments, uh, and we were we can't if we give people in certain situations if they haven't qualified for free and reduced lunch and they're just not paying for meals, we can't recoup um, the money. So we had at one point a couple of years ago twenty thirty thousand dollars, I think. And then um, Linda helped work with people in the community to, to rally and to create a fund to help pay off um, kids' balances, which is great because the idea was kids should not go without food. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the price tag. So at one point, what, what, when Linda and I were talking about this years ago, um, we, if we were going to gonna qualify a bunch of students across the board, we were looking at at the time, I think we had a number like $200,000 we were looking at, depending on the way in which we structured it. If we were just going to say, as part of our schooling program, we're going to universally pay for breakfast and lunch for all kids across the board. Um, I asked Rick Pembroke uh, this week, I said, give me, a, give me a rough estimate on what we think that would, would cost. And at the moment, he thought $400,000, but he was still, um, we're having some ongoing conversations because we want to present to the board, because um, this has been a, a dialogue that's been going on for a while. We want to present to the board um, uh, just just options and to say this is what we think it would cost to do this and here's what we think the potential um, benefit is in terms of kids and the nutrition and what that does to learning and everything else um, and then have a, and then have some conversation about it and that would be part of our next budget cycle but but that four hundred thousand dollars is when we're constantly in these conversations about money and what we want for our kids and what people feel they can afford and so um, you know if if the if the discussion was we're going to do do this, and we were going to spend no more money, uh, and or some people would want us to cut and do this. You know, let's just say, but the equivalent. I mean, we'd be talking of cutting, you know, in the ballpark of uh, as a not that this is exactly what we would do, but in terms of thinking, if you're going to try to square this up, you know, you'd cut, I don't know, six teachers. If you were going to, do, you're going to say we're not going to spend any more money, we're going to do the exact same thing. You cut the equivalent of like six six teaching staff or some other combination of items that are similarly cost. Um, and so in the in the dialogue over the last couple of years, this has been discussed, and then ultimately people have I think have found the the um, the bill um, more than they wanted to pay, or at least the board has decided because we've never put out a proposal that's gone to voters, which has included something like this. Uh, and, um, so that's where it's at, but it's an ongoing conversation. I think it's a valuable conversation. I think there's the possibility that inside of what we're doing, this, there is $400,000 worth of value, not just to feed kids, but what the outcomes are for the district. Um, but, um, but that's all stuff we need to kind of drill down on in a, in a more deep way. Sorry, long answer. I'm known for my long answers, uh, but I think all this stuff is pretty nuanced. Thanks.